y de quién, de quién le respetamos la opinión de, lo que, de quién lo sabe. ¿no? Nosotros podemos, tener este, podemos aceptar lo que dicen los académicos sobre su pensamiento de lo que ellos hacen, pero también podemos escuchar a las comunidades mismas que lo han hecho por generaciones y siglos. Y yo creo que nosotros estamos tomando, este, en, esa, en esa manera nosotros estamos escuchando lo que ellos dicen, ¿no? que um, para ellos como tienen una tradición oral y una tradición simbólica, ellos no, lo, no necesariamente lo escriben, ¿verdad? Y lo, y lo dicen, esto es lo que pasó. Por, la razón que no lo escriben es porque la, parir, la historia es viviendo. No, cuando lo escribes es como que ya muere una, una parte de la historia, ¿no? Por eso ellos lo tienen de una manera simbólica y de una manera oral. Porque cambia entre generaciones cuando diferente gente lo cuenta. Y eso es lo que nosotros, nos, nos, nosotros creo que nos guiamos por su voz de ellos, más de todo. Um, so he said, you know, how is it, uh, as this being a mysteries of the Andes, right, the series, um, How can we know that what they're doing right now is true or representative of what was done before? And I said that I think it's quite clear that it's quite important that we, we sort of distinguish who is it that we listen to. Is it Do we listen to the academics that sort of record this down or do we listen to the communities themselves that practice this for generations or practice this for centuries? And I think something that's quite important is to understand that for them the history is a living history and it's not something that is written. You know, they, they, they don't... They're, they're, they write in, in their traditions are oral history, their traditions are uh, using symbols as, as a way to communicate what they do. So I think more than anything, we have to understand for them that this is a process that's still ongoing, that still continues, and it's not something that once you write down, it sort of ends, because they, they see things as living. Um, and I think for us, it's just, you just have to be aware and be conscious of is who is it that we want to choose that we listen to? We, do we listen to the people that write it down, or do we listen to the communities themselves? as the way that they express it, as, they, as the way that they know it for the generations that, that they've lived. One other thing that he mentioned was that he himself, right, has yeah. tried doing it, and there is a, a lot of technique to ensure that the, the cord ends up being even all the way across. And so you can see right there the experience that really it takes and, and, and how much practice really people have living it year, year after year after year. And the film actually shows uh, four days and, and a little bit, Um, some other days, but actually they spend a lot of time preparing all of that even before they, they're construction, constructing the, the bridge itself. Entonces, el, las partes que vimos en el documental, verdad, vimos creo unos tres días, tres o cuatro días, pero en verdad para hacer todo, este, toman varias semanas, que esto es como la culminación de todo el trabajo. That any of the rituals that are really demonstrated aren't commercialized in the same manner that, for example, ayahuasca has been really commercialized. And so how to, I, she was saying how to really, in some ways, copyright some of uh, what the techniques or, or what's been happening. And so we were just responding a little bit uh, to that. I don't know if you want to translate what you said. I think just quite briefly, it's just that we've had the opportunity, uh, thankfully, but uh, us as an institute, we are, we're quite aware about uh, the commercialization of their, of their work, of their livelihood, and that we try to take a more holistic perspective in what we share, and that everything that we do uh, comes from just not only, um, not only go, not, it comes out uh, not only from understanding it in an intellectual level, but more than, more than anything else, putting it into practice when we go to these communities, when we film them, It's not uh, a one, we go in for two weeks, we leave, and it's done. It's actually a relationship that, uh, that they've built on for many years. So this, this film was one of the first films done by the team. And, you, uh, and sometimes when we Skype with them, you know, they still have many of the community members that are part of this movie come to their homes, you know, see how's it going, you know, they're friends. It's not, it's not like, um, it's not like an, uh, 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 something with that is a, sort of an exploitative relationship of what their knowledge is. It's uh, something that is holistic, it's a friendship that we try to keep ongoing. Uh, until you know, I think forever. I think more than anything else, uh, to what uh, uh, she was saying is how can we make sure that we protect memory appropriately and that we, and my brother was saying over there in the back that we're asking the, that's sort of the key question that we have to understand today, today being Columbus Day, more than anything, or thinking about maybe uh, colonization or everything that we've done to these indigenous communities. How can we make sure that the way we behave, the way that we, that we live our lives, is a little bit differently? by not only just understanding the memory that they share, but making sure that we also practice some of their lessons and make sure that we don't ignore how history has treated these communities more than anything else. And I also, want to add, yeah. yeah, just Carlos was also mentioning just the urgency of the issue, right? 10 years, what that means is the potential, right, that those memories don't exist anymore. And Carlos was saying that uh, he and Rodri's uncle in Huancayo, he used to know how to build them, uh, the bridges there, and now, 
that bridge isn't there anymore. And so also in terms of the, the really the global context of this, even in Peru, he was saying, unfortunately, there actually this isn't very popularized. Not very many people are seeing the films or know about them. They're, uh, it's, it's a very small group of people who do and I, who know about it. And I just want to add that actually um, prim the primary audience that uh, Doña Alejandrina and Don Jose made this, the films for were for the communities themselves. And so the very first thing that they do is they go and show it to them. And of course, they're part of the process, but they've shared. And for me, it's very moving that when they're watching themselves on there, they start crying because they that they're recorded in some way, shape, or form, that they won't be forgotten, that the traditions won't be forgotten, and just the urgency of the issue is 10 years for us might mean something different than, than it does for the community, right? Uh, the Voces Que Sana, uh, do you want to talk to me? Yeah, so Voces Que Sana, Voices That Care, we're probably just going to take maybe 10 more minutes, and, and that's all. Uh, but solo vamos a estar acá como 10 minutos, entonces si quieren irse ahorita, nomás se un momento artico más. So Voices That Heal is a movie that takes place in the southeast of Peru, in the Amazons, uh, and it covers um, various different communities that speak the Harambuk uh, language tree. And what we're covering right now is uh, around a community of 20 people, uh, a community whose language is only spoken by 20 people. And it used to be spoken by more, but uh, as you were saying, in 10 years, I, th I think there's a big possibility that this language and the traditions that they have will be lost. So Voices That Heal, is a movie about how these group of people, these healers, really move around their space, move around the Amazons in the, in the, in the, in the rainforest and are able to figure out and understand what the plants are, what's each plant, uh, what's the plant, what's the purpose of each plant, how can they use it, how can they make sure that they heal, not only through the plants, but how do they also just heal by speaking to someone. So that's one of their, what's one of their traditions is healing people just through using their voice. And um, one of the cool uh, little facts that uh, Jose was sharing with me is that they, um, that they're able to see, they're able to, because of their capacity to, to understand their surroundings so well, they're able to uh, uh, hunt in the midst of darkness, and they're also able to see uh, in a perception of all 360 degrees. Uh, and they're more, much more acutely aware of their surroundings than we are. Okay. personas ahora que hablan ese idioma en Perú, este, pero en, es, el documental de hecho muestra a cuatro diferentes comunidades en sus propias uh, idiomas y muestran cómo es que ellos este, tienen esa relación con la naturale, naturaleza, este, cómo es que sanan con las plantas, con el agua, pero también con sus voces um, y los, los cánticos que hacen. Y un hecho que compartió Don José con nosotros que es muy interesante es que no solo es que Eh, los guachiperi pueden cazar en la noche cuando está oscuro, pero también tienen, este, pueden ver de cierta manera o tienen un sentido que es de 360 grados, todo su alrededor. Ah, entonces vamos a mostrar eh, ese tráiler y ahorita este, Don José va a terminar este, de, de grabar en estos próximos dos meses y luego van a empezar a editar en diciembre. So right now where it's at is that Don José will finish filming in the next couple months and then they'll start editing and, and creating the film. In December. Right, in, yeah, December. in December. Okay. Uh, in Colombia, uh, he has uh, very, uh, very nicely come to us while we were answering the questions, and he said he wanted to share with us. So these are coca leaves. Uh, so they have, you know, medicinal and very co many cultural properties that he can speak to more than I. Uh, but he wanted to pass this around so you could take a smell. You can, uh, you can look at it. This is not. This is a coca leaf. This is a very sacred, sacred leaf. So, and they were using it in the film as well. So, I'm gonna start off uh, cute here. <laughs> Our memory program has a memory fund and 
So far, we've given about fifteen thousand uh, dollars, one for Keshwachaka to finish, and then also for Voices that, to Heal to really uh, get started. Um, and but right now, um, we're actually fundraising because Doña Alejandrina, who's right there, she um, uses what we call a hackintosh. So basically, that's a PC trying to run like a Mac to do the editing. Um, and if any of you have ever worked on really old computers, you know that that's really hard to do. Uh, so right now we're fundraising for them to be able to get a upgraded computer and really be able to do the edits much more quickly um, and do the uploads much more quickly. Um, so we wanted to, to share that. Um, and we have different donation levels. Um, este, Voces que sanan, eh, Carlos mencionó anteriormente que el Instituto Aini, ¿verdad?, dio dinero um, a nuestros uh, compañeros en Perú para terminar Quechua y para iniciar Voces que Sanan. Este, y ahora eh, lo que nosotros estamos haciendo es recabar fondos para eh, el equipo, para que tenga una computadora actualizada. Este, te, habíamos mostrado la foto de Doña Alejandrina que hace mucho de la edición. Este, ahorita está usando un Hackintosh que básicamente apoyarles en verdad para que puedan terminar este, voces que sanan eh, de una manera que no sea tan ardua, ¿no? Um, y que, que sientan que tienen el apoyo a través del mundo. Uh, so really we're fundraising more than anything to show our reciprocity uh, to them for all of their work. They're, they're, this is really a labor of love uh, for them and uh, really to to show them that they have support from around the world to really continue in this project, continue in the work that they're doing. Um, entonces ahí está, por si lo quieren ver, pueden ir a misteriosdelosandes.com y preservar memoria. So you can go to uh, misteriosdelosandes.com and go to preserve memory and you'll see information there. Uh, we also have two volunteers who are helping. The memory that has to live inside us, you can't just end today. So quiero agradecerles a todos ustedes por venir acá, por tomar un día, tomar un momento para poder reflexionar y entender que nosotros tenemos que preservar la memoria juntos de esas comunidades. Que, que sin, sin nuestro apoyo, desafortunadamente, no podemos dejarlo al chance lo que va a pasar en esas comunidades. We have to say, it's just we can't leave the chance what's going to happen to these communities. These indigenous communities are suffering from many, uh, many things like resource extraction, We're suffering from uh, displacement, all these things that, uh, that we don't get to do we don't see every day, but they experience uh, and it's very real to their lives. Entonces, este, muchas gracias a todos por venir. Tenemos este, los documentales allá atrás, Incarri está en inglés y en español, y Quechua ya lo vieron, es, es bilingüe con los subtítulos en inglés. So we do have the films back there so far.